Most people saw little difference between science and magic. Some scientists used spells and magic to change one substance to another, known as alchemy. Astrologers of the time believed that the stars had an influence on human life. Other scientists of the time used religion and the works of classical Roman and Greek thinkers in order to explain the mysteries in the world. Roger Bacon was one of the first great thinkers to use scientific experimentation in way of religious and ancient beliefs, yet he still practiced alchemy. Bacon gained fame for his teachings, and he became known as Dr. Mirabilis, meaning wonderful teacher. The spirit of the Renaissance encouraged the practical application of science to everyday life. People began to use science and experimentation to answer questions about the natural world. This became known as the era of scientific revolution because people were no longer content to explain nature in terms of religious thought and ancient ideas. This new era produced many answers in physics, astronomy, and anatomy. Scientists used mathematics to check and apply the measurements that they, using, that they recently discovered using new sorts of instruments such as the barometer, the microscope, the telescope, the air pump, and the thermometer. They also repeated their experiments to make sure they got the same results. Then they drew conclusions about what they observed. This manner of study is called the scientific method. Three major subjects during the scientific revolution were astronomy, physics, and anatomy. Astronomy is the study of all bodies in the sky. Stars, planets, the moon, the sun, and the development of the universe. Scientists involved with astronomy included Ptolemy and Copernicus. Claudius Ptolemaeus, an astronomer during the AD, stated that the Earth was the center of the universe and all other planets in the sun revolved around the Earth, which we all know is false. Ptolemy's so-called earth Center theory is also called the geocentric theory. People believed Ptolemy for many years until Nicholas Copernicus came into the picture in the 1500s. Instead, Nicholas stated that the sun is in fact the center of the universe. This sun-centered theory is also known as heliocentric theory. To distinguish the difference between geocentric and heliocentric, know that geo means earth, like geography, and helio means sun. After Copernicus published his theory in 1543, people paid no attention to it. People still believed in Ptolemy. They knew that they couldn't literally feel themselves moving around the other planets. They also knew that the sun rose on one side and set on the other, so it must revolve around the earth. Little did they know, they were wrong, and Copernicus was right. With the help of Kepler and Galileo, Copernicus could now prove this. Kepler was an astronomer and mathematician, while Galileo was a scientist. They worked to confirm Copernicus's new theory of the universe. Kepler eventually proved Copernicus's heliocentric theory correct and published his laws of planetary motion. Galileo built a telescope. He observed the planets like no one else had been able to see. He used his observations to say that not every planet revolved around the Earth. This statement caused an uproar and many would not believe him. In 1687, English scientist Isaac Newton published a book building on the works of Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo. After many experiments and measurements, Newton realized that the force that holds the planet in their orbits and the force that causes objects to fall to Earth are one and the same. He proposed the law of universal gravitation, which states that all bodies attract each other. Newton's work had a huge impact on the science of his time. Even today, his laws of motion and gravitation are applied in the development of everything from automobile seatbelts to space travel. Furthermore, Newton's work changed the way people viewed the world. No longer would most well-educated Europeans see the universe as a place in which everything moved according to the constant attention of God and his angels. Andreas Vesalius, a Flemish scientist, pioneered the study of anatomy. He refused to accept Galen's work 1,400 years early and did his own studies to see how the human body was constructed. In 1543, Vesalius published a book called On the Fabric of the Human Body, which helped readers to gain a visual understanding of components of the body and how they work together. Another scientist, English physician William Harvey, studied the circulation of blood and described how blood moved through the veins and arteries. He also observed the working of the heart. René Descartes was a philosopher and mathematician. He made advances in math, science, and philosophy. He said that all his assumptions had to be proven by facts. For example, his existence was proven by the fact that he could think. I think, therefore I am, was one of, one of his ideas. In Descartes' view, all forms of science were linked. Because of this, he thought they should be studied together. He made the law of refraction, which is a basic principle of optics. Francis Bacon thought that thought scientific theories could be developed only through observation. He thought no assumption could be made unless it was proven by repeatable experiments. He relied on physical truths as opposed to thinking or reasoning. 
During the 15 and 1600s, German Gottfried Leibniz and Sir Isaac Newton created a new branch of mathematics called calculus. They developed their new form of math independent of each other, but their thoughts were meshed into, into calculus. In the late 1500s, Dutch scientist Antony van Leeuwenhoek used a microscope to discover bacteria and other tiny life forms. In 1662, Boyle showed that temperature and pressure affect the space that a gas occupies. This helped to pioneer modern chemistry. Then, in 1774, Joseph Priestley found the element oxygen, and later Anton Lavoisier named it. He also showed that fire was not an element, and that steam mixes with air, and then it becomes invisible. Lavoisier also developed the law of conservation of matter. By the time of Priestley and Lavoisier, discovery was happening more often and more rapidly. This was due to the printing press, the rise of other scientific societies, and other communication improvements.